Hello, my name is Willem Bargman, System Engineer at HP Arbor Networking, and in this video I will talk about the traffic mirroring types that we have on the Arbor OS CX switches. We have three different traffic mirroring types on the CX switches. The first one is a local mirror. With the local mirror, it is possible to mirror traffic from a local interface to another local interface. The second one is the remote mirror. With the remote mirror, it is possible to mirror traffic from a local interface to a remote destination and that traffic will be encapsulated using GRE. The last one is to mirror traffic to the switch CPU. Let's dive in the different traffic mirroring types. The local mirror. With the local mirror, we can mirror traffic from a local interface to another local interface. So we have the source port and on the source port, that is the traffic that we want to monitor. So in this example, interface one slash one slash one. And on the mirror port, the destination port, there is the analyzer connected. So in this case, interface one slash one slash two. So how to configure this? Just with a few commands, it is possible to mirror the traffic. So first we define the mirror session, so mirror session one. Then we define the destination interface. So that is where the analyzer is connected. So destination interface one slash one slash two. Then we have the source interface, the source interface one slash one slash one, followed by the command both. And both means both the received traffic on the interface, but also the transmitted packets on the interface. So it is also possible to specify just the received packets or just the transmit packets. The last step is to enable the mirror session using the command enable. If you don't specify this command, the mirror session will be disabled. So make sure to enable this one. Regarding the source options, there are four different options available to mirror traffic. So the first option is that the source interface, that is what I'm using in this example. The second one is a VLAN, so the VLAN as a source. The third one is a link aggregate. And the last one will be a routed only port, so an interface where an IP address directly is configured on. The remote mirror, also called AirSpan. So with the remote mirror, it is possible to mirror traffic to an analyzer that is not directly connected on the switch. So we can mirror the traffic from the source interface one slash one slash one to an analyzer and that analyzer is connected behind a different switch. The traffic will be encapsulated using URE. So how does this work? First you define your mirror session. So mirror session one slash one slash one. Then you specify the destination. The destination in this example will be in tunnel. The destination tunnel, this means GRE tunnel, and then you specify the IP address of the analyzer. So 10.27.10.118. The last one, the last step is to specify the source IP. The source IP 10.27.2.3. This is an IP address of the switch. So this will be the source IP of the GRE packets. Remember that it is not possible to specify the IP address of the management port to be used as a source. The source, that will be the traffic that you want to mirror. So source interface one slash one slash one. And also here, I want to mirror all the received and transmitted packets. And also enable the mirror session. The source interface options are exactly the same as the local mirror type. The last type is the mirror to CPU type. With the mirror to CPU type, it is possible to mirror traffic from a local source to the switch CPU. When you mirror the traffic to the switch CPU, it is possible to save that to a packet capture file and copy that to a remote destination. How to configure this? First, we need to specify the mirror session. So using the same mirror session, mirror session one, specify the destination CPU. So not a sort, not a destination in an interface or in tunnel, but the destination will be the switch CPU. Then the source interface, and don't forget to enable the mirror session. If you want to view the packets live on the switch console, you can use the T-shirt utility for that. So first you need to enable the diagnostics commands on the switch using the command diag, and then diag utilities T-shirt. This will give you a live view of the packets that are mirrored to the switch GPU. It's also possible to capture and save the packets to a file. Again here, you first need to enable the diagnostics on the switch, and then it is recommended to first delete the previous packet capture file using the command diag utilities t shirt delete file. This will make sure to clean up the previous packet capture. 
Then you start new packet capture using the command diacritity shark file, and this will save the packet capture to a file on the switch. After you capture the traffic, you can copy the packet capture to a remote destination. That is done using the command copy t shirt pcap to the remote destination. It can be an SFTP or a TFTP server, and then you can also specify the PRF. By default, it will be VRF default, but if you want to specify another VRF, that is possible. The source options are exactly the same as the previous examples. We have now seen three types to mirror traffic on the Arborable SCX switches. With the three types, all the traffic that is matching the source and all the data flows will be mirrored. But sometimes you want to be specific in which data flow you want to mirror. That is possible using the policy based mirror method. Using the policy based mirror, you will specify which data you want to mirror. For example, all the data to a specific IP address or maybe a specified uh, IP address or a specified port you want to mirror. For example, port 18. So in this example, I want to mirror all the data to and from the IP address 192.168.100.115. So how to do that? First, you need to specify a class the class IP mirror, this means an IPv4 class. It is also possible to specify to configure an IPv6 class or a MAC based class. With line 10, we will match all the data to IP address 192.168.100.115. With the command any, any means any protocol and any source. The second line will match all the data from the IP address. So match any protocol, source IP 192.168.100.115 and destination IP any. After specifying the class, we can configure the policy. So in this example, I'm using policy mirror. That is the name of the policy. And then first, you there's just one line needed to mirror the traffic. So first you specify the class, so class IP mirror. So this is this is class IP mirror that we previously defined, and then the action will be mirror one. So this means what this what this does is it will mirror all the packets that are matching class IP mirror. So if traffic is not matching, it will be allowed because this is not an ACL, but this is a policy. So all the traffic matching on that class will be mirrored to mirror session one. Then you define the mirror session. So mirror session one, destination CPU, and enable. So there is no source interface defined in this mirror session. That is correct. It is not strange because we have that policy action mirror over here. And the last step is to apply the policy on an interface. So remember, there is just one policy on an interface. So if there is already an existing policy interface, that policy will be overwritten by this one. So how to configure that? Interface 1 slash 1 slash 10 in this example, apply policy mirror in and apply policy mirror out. So this will make sure that the data that is transmitted and received on that interface will be checked against this policy. Some verifications commands that you can use. So the first command is show class IP mirror commands, and it will show the configuration of the class. The second command is show policy mirror commands and it will show the configuration of the policy, but also it will show where this policy is applied. So in this example, it is just applied on interface 1 slash 1 slash 2 slash 10. And the last command that you can use is the show mirror command. Show mirror 1 means show mirror session 1. And over here you can see the status of that mirror session. So the status is enabled, uh, there is no source, and that is Quite logic because we are using the policy based mirror method. Destination is the CPU, and we see that there are some packets are matching this mirror session. Packet capture support overview. We have now seen three types to mirror traffic on the OS CX switches. All the switches have support for mirroring packets. However, not all the different types are available on all platforms. So the local mirror is available on all the different platforms. However, the remote mirror session is not available on the 6300L switch 
and the mirror with the CPU is not possible on the 4100, the 6000 and the 6100 series. Control plane detection. When we mirror traffic to the switch CPU, it could overload the switch CPU in theory. The CX switches has a built-in control plane policing policy in place to prevent CPU overload. When packets are dropped by the control plane policing policy, the packets are not saved to the T-shirt file, and for that reason, it is good to be selective when to start mirroring traffic to the switch CPU. To check the control plane protection policy, you can use the command show policy statistics followed by the class. And the class name is class mirror to CPU. And in this example, I'm using a 6200 switch. And the 6200 switch has a rate limit of 100 packets per second. And in this example, you see that a lot of packets are passed, so they are mirrored to the switch CPU and are seen and saved to the packet capture. However, we also see some packets that are dropped. So when you see this, when you see the packets are dropped, they are not seen by the packet capture and also not saved to the packet capture shell. So it is good practice to be selective in which data you want to mirror to prevent the CPU overload. Now it's time for a demo. I'm now logged into my 6200 lab switch. And in this example, I'm using the policy-based mirror method to mirror a specific data flow to the switch CPU and save that to a packet capture file. First, we're going to define the class class IP and then the name of the class. I will use the name of mirror. Then match any protocol from any source to the destination IP 10.27.11.22. Also going to match the return flow. So from, uh, we will match any protocol from the source IP to destination any, and that's it. Now I will use the policy and we'll come to copy to the policy. Use also the name mirror. Then we will match the class mirror. Action, sorry, class IP mirror. Action mirror one. Okay, show run current. Yeah, so that is their policy mirror, class IP mirror, action mirror one. The next step is to define the mirror session. Mirror session one, destination, CPU, and enable. So let's verify, show run current. So mirror session one, destination, CPU. Okay, so we have the class, we have the policy, we have the mirror session, and the last step is to apply the policy on the interface. And I will apply it on interface 14. So apply policy mirror in and also apply policy mirror out so we want to have both data flows to transmit packets and the return packet packets some verification command commands that i'm going to use show class ip mirror commands so this is the class show policy mirror commands is the policy so the policy mirror it is you over here you see the cloth that is matching and the action is mirror and then policy is applied on interface 14 and we can also verify the mirror session so mirror session one so mirror one and we see there are some the mirror session is enabled there is no, no source interface uh, specified that's correct because we are using the policy based mirror but we also see some output packets. So let's now check if it is working. So first we're going to enable the diagnostics on the switch. Diag and then Diag Utility T-Shark. So this will enable the live packet capture. Yes, and I initiated some packets. So ICMP, you see the data is mirrored to the switch CPU and I can directly display it. Control C. Stop the traffic inspection, but now I want to save the packets to a packet capture file. So it's almost the same command. So dive utilities T shark first clean up a previous file. So using the command delete file. And then we can start the packet capture and save that to a file. 
So it's now running, Packetcap is running, also initiating some packets to, to, the, um, to the destination. This will now be saved to the packet capture file. Okay, leave it running for a while and then I stop the packet capture. So now we can copy the packet capture file to the remote destination. And that is done using the copy command. So copy, and then you have to specify the t shirt file, and then the remote destination. So that this is an SFTP or a TFTP server. So in this case, I'm using SFTP and then F1027 10.180 slash uh, policy error.pcap. Optional, it is possible to specify the VR ref, but I'm not going to do that so the default VR ref will be used. Okay, and the file is copied successfully. Over here, you can see the packet capture. So this one is copied to my system. So the name is policymirror.pcap. And you can see some packets are saved. So ICMP packets, I also see some UDP packets from that source IP, but you can see it is always that source IP 11.22. So the packets to that destination, to that IP address, but also packets from that IP address. So let's check the control plane for protection policy. We can use the command show cop policy and then statistics, and then we specify the class, show class mirror to CPU. Now we see some packets has been passed, but zero packets has been dropped. And that's correct because I'm not hitting the limit of 100 packets per second. But if you have a packet capture running and too much packet are packets are mirrored to the switch CPU, you probably will see the packet drop account will increase. On the 6200 switch, the limit is 100 packets per second. On other platforms, the limit, this limit is, is higher. Thank you for watching. I hope that you like this video.